What do you think, David? Why would you do this to me? Can you explain what's happening in the video? This is the Aerobic National Championships? This is essentially how I run a class. Um, you can't do gymnastics unless you come in like, you, you, like uh, pre-planned leotards. <laughs> I can't take this seriously, man. Uh, <laughs> My name is David Jarima. I'm a senior coach at Academy Alliance and the head coach for the gymnastics program and the gymnastics strength training at Academy. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some videos of traditional gymnasts, calisthenics athletes, and CrossFit athletes, looking at what they're doing, what's required from their performances, and the carryover from one of these disciplines to the other. I'm going to talk about kipping, the application in CrossFit, and who we're looking at. This guy's an OG CrossFitter, Chris Spieler. This guy's stupid strong, stupid athletic. Now, what you're gonna see in the video is a, something called a kipping pull-up, where you flail your body back and forth. You go between two positions, hollow and arch, which, may, which, is, or which are like the two main positions in all of gymnastics when it comes to body shape. You go between hollow and arch to generate momentum to be able to reduce load on a movement so you can perform it better, okay? It's like when the gymnasts are on rings and they swing to throw themselves into the handstand. You're not gonna ask someone to do a strict handstand press for two minutes straight. It's stupid. Okay, so he's performing 100 kipping pull-ups here. I think it's 100. He goes for 100, yeah. Super relaxed in the lower half. He's doing a little bit of a hip pop. He's using his midsection to pull himself up. He's finishing the rep with his arms. He's clean, he's consistent. He has control over his form. Every single kip looks almost identical. You see his, his grip is really relaxed for efficiency. It's like, if I were to be super like picky and strict on this guy, I'd say his legs are apart, he's bending his knees a little bit, and if I want to be like a hard ass, I'd be like, keep your knees straight, lock those legs together, move entirely through your midsection, but that doesn't necessarily work all the time for every single application. There's a time and a place for everything. Here, he's trying to pick a movement that allows him to use as much help as possible with as little break in form and as relaxed as possible. So he's trying to conserve energy. He's going for a hundred pull-ups in one unbroken set. There's no easy way to do this. Yeah, I'm honestly, I approve of this guy. How many pull-ups can you do in a row? How many pull-ups can I do in a row? Yeah. So my biggest set, and I'm, I'm a weird example. My biggest set of unbroken strict pull-ups is 23. Now, I have a weird thing where my volume has usually been stuck in like the mid to low 20s, but I can do a pull-up with 115 pounds hanging off my waist. So I have a really high-ish one rep max pull-up, but my total volume of pulling isn't necessarily high. And I know people who can do more pull-ups than me, but they can barely pull half of what I do on a one rep max pull-up. Some guidelines on clipping and CrossFit. Again, kipping is specific to CrossFit. Kipping works if you're a CrossFit athlete. I'm not gonna teach someone how to kick a soccer ball if their goal is to put a puck into a net. It's stupid, don't make that argument, okay? Kipping has requirements too. If you're doing the classes and you're, you've done one of my classes at Academy, you'll know, you've heard me say this before, you're not allowed to do kips or beat swings like this unless you have a prerequisite level of strength. If you don't, you're subjecting yourself to slap tears. Slap tears is like the tissue on the, the superior anterior and posterior aspect of like the shoulder when you go overhead and as you slam your multiples of body weight down into your shoulder with no control, you're subjecting yourself to possible tears in the shoulder capsule, okay? So, this guy obviously can do a lot of pull-ups. He's been doing this for a long time and he's gradually gotten himself here. If you think kipping makes it so easy, I want you to kip and do 100 pull-ups in one shot. Kipping and CrossFit, very specific to CrossFit. Uh, do I advocate it? Yes, if you are serious about CrossFit and you want to compete. If you do not want to compete in CrossFit and you're doing it for your general health and you just want to get stronger, it is not necessary. If you want to specialize in gymnastics, again, it is not necessary. If you get to a very, very certain point and you talk to me about it or someone and you want to do it, then I would try it out. But if you can't do 10 strict pull-ups and you have shoulder issues or you can't put your hands over your head without doing this, you have no business swinging yourself on a bar. Ever. <laughs>
Next video! <laughs> the goat. Do you know who she is? I know exactly who she is. I'm gonna butcher her name too. Nadia Komenechi. I hope it's <laughs> that, Komenechi. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, men's gymnastics, women's gymnastics. Men have a single high bar. Women's gymnastics have a dual bar that is thicker and made of wood. Now, how does this make this different? A men's bar is thinner in its metal that you allow it to rotate on one point of axis. There's some bend to it, allows you to get a little bit of whip and a little bit of momentum. Women's bars, they're thicker, meaning they're harder to hold onto. They're wooden. You can tear the shit out of your hands. They have lots of whip. They can throw you off the bars. I've tried doing muscle ups and stuff on these bars. I felt like an idiot. How do they do this? I don't know. But you have two bars. If you're swinging around, you might hit the other bar. I have no idea how they do this. Terrifying. <laughs> so she gets a perfect score on this. And there's a lot of moves, I think, in this, or a few moves in her routine that are now illegal. There's moves that are illegal in competition now because they can kill you. Maybe? Well, They're dangerous as shit. <laughs> try and point them out when uh, we get there. That was a glide kip. That's a 360 pull up. I have no idea what the hell she just did right there. Forward roll, grabs it behind her, twist. I have what? <laughs> yeah. Break your hips, throw yourself upside down, fold yourself in half, somehow land, yeah. I don't know fucking anything about this video. I just know it blows my mind. I can understand the amount of strength, consistency, mobility, and your ability to control like compression, like your ability to keep a tight midline, like pulling yourself in half like that, even if her feet are on the bar, just staying compressed, being able to launch through your hips, know where you are and land on your feet without snapping your fucking neck is insane. That's just a dismount. Let's watch this again. 9.9, .9. it's not perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip on her for not getting a perfect score. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I to say? Again, look at those abs. 360 dive, I have no idea how she got to the second bar that easily. Clyde Kip, I don't even remember the name of that. She's moving way too fast, 360, what? So she's teleporting from one bar to another. Yeah, nope, I'll break myself in half. Is she doing those with bare hands and no grips? Yeah. She's not using grips on this. <laughs> Gymnastics, you have grips that have a huge buckle on the wrist to keep your wrist stable, keep the grip on your hand, and they have a leather strap which goes up but has a dowel in the center. The dowel stops your hand from falling off the rings or the bar that you're on. So when you're doing high speed movements, as you're whipping around the bar, you're less likely to dislodge from the bar, meaning it's safer. She doesn't have grips on her hands. She's doing it, I think, maybe with a little bit of tape and some chalk. And I'm pretty sure if you put a piece of coal into her hand and she closed it, a diamond would come out. She is insanely strong and she can probably break your hand squeezing it. Bad respect. That's real gymnastics. Now we're gonna go over specifically calisthenics athletes and how they may differ. That's ridiculous. So a lot of these guys have access to like parks and stuff outside when it comes, and usually these parks are again are static. You have like bars fixed into the ground or like overhead. So a lot of the things that they do are on a bar or a set of bars that never move. So their strength and their skill set will develop differently than people who are competitive gymnasts. They don't need to do acrobatic moves, rarely. That's fucking insane. So the reason these guys get so, so good at what they're doing is because their variety of what's available to them is probably very, very minimal. So they get to repeat the same thing over and over and over again and become extremely proficient in it. This guy can jump higher with his arms than he can with his legs. What? I... That's an exorcism, he's possessed. <laughs> That's just raw strength, fingertip planche. He's doing it with the supinated grip, which is extremely difficult on the biceps. That's just, I'm not even gonna talk about, that's ridiculous. Fitness and health is a huge 
cultural thing uh, overseas and they have like bar parks like here in the video. Now this is available to a lot of people so you're going to start to tend to see people who use it way more than like North American counterparts and when people become competitive competitive athletes or highly active calisthenics athletes they get to practice in this bar park all the time. Generally there's a pull-up bar, there's somewhere they're going to be able to do dips and there's some uprights which means that the skills that they practice are pretty much limited to either the bars that's available to them or on the floor. That's why like so many calisthenics athletes are like insane when it comes to pull-ups, strict pulling skills, strict static skills, uh, way more than gymnasts. And a lot of calisthenics athletes are stronger than gymnasts at their specific discipline and skill. You can't compare them because there's gymnasts who can't do as many reps or pull as, many pull as much weight, but when it comes to different static elements on like the floor or rings or parallel bars which have some flex to them, it's a different ballpark. So mad respect to calisthenics athletes because their strict strength is through the roof. If you want us to break down any other gymnastics or bodyweight strength videos, please shoot us a message or send us a link and we'll do our best to get back to you. I love explaining gymnastics and breaking down gymnastics and bodyweight strength skills. Like and subscribe to the channel, everybody. And if you want, follow us at Academy of Lions at Instagram. What was that move? Hey! Solid. Yeah! <laughs> Put this out there, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs>